Day two, I'm gonna put a handle on this bad boy. Okay, so of course with a hewing hatchet, what we're looking at is if we're right-handed, we want the um, angle of the blade to angle to the right. If we're left-handed, it should angle to the left. And the reason for that is if I'm holding a piece of smaller lumber and I'm hewing, okay, this is going to be coming down straight. It's going to offset my handle and not let my knuckles smash against the wood. And I'm going to get that nice flat piece. So we need to think about that first and foremost. Then what I like to do is just put this off to the side and take my actual handle. And I'm going to measure the depth, okay, of my wedge according to my handle before I do anything. And I'll tell you why I like to do this so much. The reason why, if I mark this off here, just quickly, and it doesn't have to be perfect, is because when I do this, I know that when I'm driving this wedge in, if I hit this point at the top of my axe handle, my wedge is already um, bottomed out, and I'm not pounding and pounding and pounding, okay? Uh, sometimes you'll get wedges that they're gonna go totally in, and that's fine. Sometimes you're gonna get wedges that stick out this far. What happens is people just keep smashing this down. You're not getting anywhere. That's as far as the wedge is gonna go, so I like to know that reference point. The next thing I do is I look at where this shoulder is at. You'll see guys, they put the ax heads on and they look like this. You know, this shoulder's here for strength and rigidity. So we really wanna get that ax head down into there the best that we can. So I'm just looking at this, okay? And I'm thinking, okay, that's about a good spot. I'll try to do this so that you can see. That's about a good spot. So what I'm gonna do is just take a pencil again and just draw, whoops, a rough line across there. So I know how far I'm gonna set that in. If I set that incorrectly, all right, the next thing I need to look at is where I'm at, is that coming out of the top of the ax? And it's not, okay? So I need to rethink that. So I'm gonna have to drive that down about that much. So that is just gonna require me to do a little bit more shaping, which isn't gonna be that much of a problem. I'll get my rasp out and shape it. But if I drive it down there, I have about an eighth of an inch out the very, very top, a little bit more out the sides. And of course, I can always go a little bit beyond that. So my plan here is to reach the second mark when we're fitting this and go a little bit beyond. I know how far I can drive my wedge in. If it doesn't go all the way, that's okay too, but I know my maximum level. So they're the first two things I found that are most helpful with doing this. Having right here a two by four and a one by two, okay, allows me to set my ax here that I can start to set that head and drive that in. Okay, you can see how I have that set up. I can bring that out a little bit more and I'm good to go. Uh, what I'm really looking for when I do this is making sure it's, everything's in right. Now this ax handle I know is gonna slide in a little bit. I don't think it's gonna go the whole way and we really don't want it to just slide right in. That would not be a good fit. So I'm just looking at this and what I'm gonna do to start is I'm just gonna take a piece of wood and start to tap that in and look what's happening, okay? So, so far, so good, it's looking okay. Front to back, I could tell I'm a little bit forward. All right, but as I come down, that should bite in a little bit more. I think the biggest issue is gonna be getting it set like that. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm just gonna take a piece of wood here and on this flat part of the bottom of the ax handle, I'm giving this nice, clean, crisp wax, okay? So I'm just holding this to stabilize it. And then I'm just looking at my head. Now, if you can see here, what we're starting to get is a little bit of curl in there and a little bit of curl in here. So at this point, we're gonna go back to the vise, similar as we did yesterday, and we're gonna put our punch on and just pop this back out very gently. We don't wanna damage the tip of that ax, okay? But I know I'm not gonna be able to drive that this far down, so I'm gonna to have to remove a little bit of material. So again, just reset it in here, put my drift in place, pop, 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 and we should be close to being out. There we go. Okay, so we're out. 
So at this point, what I can do is look at where this was binding up and I can take a rasp, which I have old horseshoe rasps always around here. And I'm gonna take the finer side, not the coarser side, and I'm just gonna work those areas to just remove a little bit of material. Okay, so I know in the front we had a little bit. So the easiest way to work the front is just to rotate around as we go. Again, this doesn't have to be super pretty. You don't want it real messed up, but you're just trying to remove a little bit of material so we could set this in here properly. Okay, once we get close, we're really gonna hammer that on hard. So you see, I only took a little bit of material, but that's gonna help it set even a little bit deeper. I was already at my first line that I drew, so I don't have too much more to go, and I really want that seated really tight on there. So let's see what we can do this time. Okay, so we're starting to get closer. I could see in the back now, we're starting to get a little bit of curling. The front, a little bit too. So again, I'm gonna take my drift and work this out. File, and I'm gonna repeat this process as many times as I need until I get within about a half an inch of here. So when I set this and this starts happening about a half to a quarter of an inch away, I'm gonna say more like a quarter, inch away from my final line, that's it. Then what we're gonna do is transfer this to the floor where I could get more leverage, take a little bit heavier piece of wood and really just drive that in the rest of the way. So you can see right here, that's where we're starting to really bite in the wood. And uh, we need to get it, so this side is the back side where I don't have a line drawn. Look at the front side, we need to get down to here. So. We're getting close, we're in about a half inch territory, so I need to get this cleared out about a quarter more inch. I'm gonna say it's probably gonna bind up, I could feel a high spot in here, high spot in there, so we're gonna just use the rasp, clean that out. Okay, so we're gonna put our big farrier's rasp away right now, we're gonna switch to something else, and I actually carry this in my kit quite often, it's called a four in one or a four in hand. Uh, rasp and basically what that means is we have a flat side of course and fine and we also have a, a rounded file coarse and fine and that rounded file really allows you to get in at this shoulder area if you just put a straight rasp on here you could see we're not going to get in there there's no way to actually get that and you're changing the shape but the round the round file can actually get in there and meet that curvature that we're looking for and work that out. After doing this for a while, you could see you're gonna have a little bit of markings. You could switch over to the finer one and that will smooth all that out and you'll be good to go. What I'm actually gonna do then to finish this up is you could see underneath my area, I'm getting in there a little bit. I'm just gonna take some sandpaper and just finely sand that. It's not gonna hurt anything. It's gonna make it look a little bit nicer. It's gonna blend it a little bit better. I'm actually gonna put some oil on this when it's all done, so it's gonna really blend this in really, really well. So for now, take my rasp, use the coarse side, and just start to work this, just to get this trimmed down. Okay, so I think we're just about on the home stretch here, guys, to uh, get this set appropriately. So. Couple things I'm looking for. When I put this on the back of the board here, I wanna make sure that I'm not binding my handle up. Everything's straight and even. So we're looking pretty good. Just gotta keep after it. See, we're getting up through there. It's looking good. We're biting in really good. And I think we're gonna keep it right about there. We're starting to really get down on that shoulder pretty well. I could see this is seated real good. We have some extra gaps up in this top, but the wedge should hopefully take care of that. 
Okay guys, so we're gonna take our wedge now. I have my line drawn, and what I like to do is take a little bit of wood glue. It just seems to bite a little bit better into there. I'll put a little bit of wood glue, not much, just a little bit that if I ever have to get this out, I could still uh, possibly pop this out. I'll stand this up, let me make sure I got this in frame for you guys. And all that I'm doing now is putting this wedge on top, trying to hold it the best I can in here. And then I'm gonna start out just getting that set like that. And working that in. All right, so we're just gonna work this in. You could see we have a little bit to go yet if we were gonna bottom that out, but we really have to go by the feel of the ax head. So right now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to this just a little bit. Bang that wedge in. And again, I know this is my bottom point right here, that line, but I might not be able to get to that. There's enough pressure in this head pushing out with this wedge, I don't need to go to that point. But what I'm gonna say is by looking at this, I know that this eye is formed a little bit off compared to my handle. And uh, that's just because I honestly believe that this is a hand forged ax head. So uh, I didn't think that this handle was gonna be the most ideal, but it is tight. It's tight everywhere. So we wanna try to get the rest of it in there the best we can. What I'm gonna do now is just give this some time to set and then we'll come back to it. Okay, so we allowed this some time to set. I'm just gonna take a razor knife now and uh, just trim this wedge. I'm gonna take a little bit of this old utility knife I have here. Back to this side. After a little bit more, let's see if we break it free. There we go. Looks good. So now I'm just going to trim up these edges a little bit so they don't splinter out. And we're pretty good. So I'm going to let this wood, wooden wedge set now because remember we put glue on this. So I'm going to let this set now for a little bit. Okay. And then uh, what we'll do from there is we'll put our step wedge in. But that needs some time to set, so we'll probably wait a couple hours for that. All right, so the last step is to put our step wedge in. Now, these axes come with these round step wedges. I really prefer the traditional style pizza shape step wedge. And the reason for that is these are very difficult to get out, in my opinion, these round ones. So I really just want to put this step wedge in um, because it's easier if I ever need to remove this. Now, when I look at this handle, the bottom is fitted super, super tight. The top, side to side, the wedge did perfect. It's pressed real well to the front. There's a very, very small, I'm gonna say a 16th of an inch gap in the back. So this step wedge is actually gonna press front to back. It's gonna press this wood out front to back. Okay, the wedge itself, the wood wedge is pressing side to side. Now we wanna press front to back, so that's where the step wedge is gonna come into play absolute best. So we're just gonna center this off. And all that I did here was I took uh, one that you could buy at a hardware store and I grinded this one side down. So we're gonna put this here, take a small hammer, just get it set, make sure it's centered. Put it on something stick. Start to hammer that in. Now what I like to do when that's all done, it's in there really good now. It's set that back a little bit. I'm actually gonna take a uh, punch like we used yesterday, put this on top, whack that in a little bit more to get it down below the surface. And then our ax head is in there, good and tight. Okay, I have one little gap in the back here, but I think that's because the eye was a little bit misformed because um, I really didn't touch the top of this uh, this handle at all. So I'm going to say the eye was probably a little bit misformed. So we did our absolute best. We closed that in really tight. It's seated real tight. It's really squared up to the handle the proper way. The bevel is pointing the right way now. So all that's really left 
is some boiled linseed oil on this or birch oil. Either one will work. And then uh, just give it some really good coats. Then put your final sharpening on. Okay, so that's it. Our axe is all finished off. We are uh, set to go. Like I said in the last scene, basically boil linseed oil or birch oil on here. Uh, really get the end really, really good. Get a lot of oil saturated down in there. And then I'll put my final sharpening on. Again, a hewing hatchet. If you can see that, can you? Yep. Should only have a bevel on one side, so I'm gonna file this side really well. You're gonna get a burr on the back side, so very, very lightly with your stone, you wanna work that back bevel off and get a chisel style grind on this ax. But I'm really happy with how it came out. I'm definitely gonna be using this ax for a couple upcoming projects. I hope you learned something from this. Um, people make this so technical, uh, it doesn't need to be, you know, it's just some basic concepts and that's what I wanted to really show you I got this project done. It took me two days because I did my axe head one day Handle the second day, but I'm gonna say overall I have less than an hour and a half into this actually the longest that it took me was doing the um, Getting the old handle out so it came out pretty well I'm gonna put the link if you haven't seen the first one down below in the info and uh, again Hope you enjoyed this project. I know I like doing this and having myself a brand new axe on the cheap. So if you haven't already, check us out at coldcrackerbushcraft.com for our classes and all our merchandise online. And until the next video, stay in the woods or like we said last video, stay in your shop.